Hi everyone, this is Michael. Adobe just released a new update to Lightroom Classic. This is version 9.3 of June 2020, in case you're watching this sometime in the future. Now this isn't a major update. It's not going to change your life, but there are a couple of new features that you might find helpful. So let me show you what those are. First of all, with the local adjustments, like the graduated filter, radial filter, and adjustment brush, there's this new hue slider. So let me just brush over an area of the image like this and show you how that works. So if I shift this slider, you can see that I'm changing the hues within that area of the image. And it's doing it in a little different way than the other color controls that you had previously available with the local adjustments, right? So let me set that back to zero. Before you could change the temp, you know, make the temp in an area of the image like this warmer, more yellow or cooler, more blue. You could change the tint, make it more pink or magenta or more green. You could, of course, change the saturation or use this color picker, which overlays a color on top of the existing colors in the image. So one of the differences between this, between this color picker, which is a very useful tool in some instances, and the new hue slider, is that, again, when you're using this color picker, you're mixing colors. You're overlaying a color on top of the existing colors and sort of mixing them together. While as, let me set that back to zero, if you change this hue slider, you're actually shifting all the hues within part of the image and you can change them completely. You can actually replace the colors in a particular part of the image. Now let me just point out a couple of things about how this works. When I first click on an area, so actually let me get rid of that adjustment brush pin and let's say I'm gonna click on some of the blue water here. And if you look at this hue slider, when I do that, you'll see it change. So I'm gonna click on the blue water and you could see that that shifted slightly. It didn't shift as much as I thought it would. Let's try clicking down there, that's better. So that shifted the color more to blue or blue-green. That's sort of your starting place. But this doesn't really matter. And I'll show you another example here. Let's say I'll get rid of that pin and start again by clicking on some yellow leaves. And again, you should see this slider shift. So I'll click on some of those yellow leaves here and you can see it shifted this slider toward yellow. But again, that doesn't really matter because when you move this, it's going to shift all the hues within the area that you've selected. All right, so let me brush over a little bit larger area so you can see this better. You can see that not only have I changed the color of the yellow leaves, changed it to magenta, but I've also shifted the color of the blue water behind it to become green. So when you're looking at this slider, this little arrow represents the color that I originally clicked on, in this case yellow. And the top bar shows the color that I've changed that to. So the yellow has shifted to magenta and the blue water has shifted to green. Right, so it's shifted all the colors, and again, it doesn't really matter which one you click on first. Now, obviously, I don't wanna change the color of these leaves to magenta. I'm just kind of showing you how this works. Let's say I wanted to change the color of these yellow leaves to orange. Now, you've always been able to go down to the HSL panel or the color panel here and find a hue and change it, right? So if I wanna change this yellow hue, I've already got it at minus 17, but let's say I wanted to change it to make it more orange, right? So let me just take this and slide it to the left and I can indeed make those leaves look more orange that way. The problem here with this image is that I have some other colors in the water here that are pretty close and those have been shifted as well. Those have been shifted from kind of gold to this orangey color, which I don't want. I don't want to change the color of the water here. So with these hue sliders, you can't get very precise about exactly which hues you're going to change and which ones you're not. 
The best way to do that in Lightroom is with the color range. So let me set that back to where it was, minus 17, and I'll click on the adjustment brush. And let's see, I have this pin here, which I started before I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm just gonna paint over all of these yellow leaves, right? And it doesn't matter really how precise I get or not. I'm just using a big brush to paint over that whole area. That's what my mask looks like. And that's fine for now, because we're gonna use the color range to refine that selection. And I haven't made any changes here, so the image looks the same. All these sliders are still at zero. But I'm gonna go down here now to the range mask and change it from off to color. Now, this isn't a tutorial about the range mask. I explain that in depth in my Lightroom course, Landscapes in Lightroom. But here I'm just gonna show you quickly how I would use this color range tool in conjunction with the new hue slider. Okay, so I changed this from off to color. I'm gonna click on the eyedropper here and then click on the color I wanna select. So let's say the yellow right there. So I placed a little eyedropper pin there. And if I hold down Option or Alt and move this amount slider, I can see my selection. So what's selected is white, what's not selected is black. And what I'm trying to do as I adjust this is select the leaves without selecting that gold water back here behind, right? So by dragging this amount slider down, I can do that sort of, although the leaf selection isn't great. Let me try adding to that selection. So I'm going to not click on something because that's gonna replace this eyedropper, but shift click say on this greenish leaf. And then once again, look at the amount slider here and what's being selected and that's better i think that's selecting more of the leaves and again most of this water back here is not getting selected so i think that's pretty close let me give that a try so i'm going to set the eyedropper back in its place and once again i could use any of the previously available tools to change the color within that selection right so i could take this temp slider and push it up and that makes the leaves kind of more, a little bit more orangey. There's before and there's after, but not a big change. I could go into the color picker and maybe overlay, you know, red or magenta here, and that changes the leaves to make them more orange. I can see here when I do that now that the selection I made maybe isn't great. I've selected some of those yellow leaves, but not some of these greener ones. So let me modify that again. I'm gonna go back down here and click on the eyedropper and then maybe click or shift click, I should say, on some of those greener leaves. That's better. Now I've selected more of the yellow leaves, most of them. Still without changing the water behind the leaves, at least not too much. If I double click the word color to set everything back to zero, yeah, I don't see much of a change, if any, back there, but I certainly see the leaves changing, which is what I was after. So if I want these leaves to be this color orange, you know, that works perfectly well to use this color picker and sort of mix that red magenta color with the yellow. But if I wanted to make these leaves say crimson red, I don't, you know, I don't think that's realistic. And, you know, for me with nature photos, I want to keep the colors at least pretty realistic. I might want to tweak them a little bit, but I don't want to change them completely. But just to show you how this works, let's say if I did want to change these leaves to crimson red, no matter what I do here with the color picker, I can't quite do that, right? I can make them orange, you know, I could make them dull them out by mixing yellow with blue, which doesn't work. I can make them green. Anyway, I can't make them really red. So I'm gonna X out of there, double click the word color to set that back to zero, and instead we'll try the new hue slider. So let me just shift that and push it to the left. And you can see that with the hue slider, I can make those leaves crimson red or really any color I want, right? I can make them purple, I can make them blue, you know, green, whatever. But you know, let's say again that I wanted to make them kind of crimson red, I could go in that direction. And by using the color range, I've done that without changing the gold water behind the leaves, all right? So I use the color range to make the selection and then this hue slider to shift or you could say replace the original color of the leaves with this new color. Now again, I 
don't see many instances where I'd want to change the color that much in a nature photo. But I could see this as being very useful for, say, changing the color of a person's jacket in a photo or changing the color of a car or a boat in a picture. Now, in this recent update to Lightroom Classic, there's another change that I want to show you with the tone curve. Now, this isn't actually a change in function, right? So you can't do anything really new here. It's a change in the interface, and I think it's an improvement. So first of all, previously, to change between the point curve and the parametric curve, there was this obscure little box down in the lower right-hand corner of this panel. Now you can change between the point curve and the parametric curve using these little icons at the top. All right, so right now I'm in the point curve, which is this little circle, and then this is the parametric curve, right? So here's the parametric curve, which I never use, but um, anyway, just to show you where it is, and then here's the point curve. Also, in the point curve, previously, in order to get to the individual color channels, you had to use a little pull-down menu down here. Now you can just click on these little color icons, which is a little bit quicker and easier. I don't often use those individual color channels, but once in a while. Um, maybe if I want to change the color balance of the shadows without changing the midtones or the highlights. Now also, go back to the composite RGB channel here. You can right-click anywhere around here and get some new options. You can reset the channel, reset all channels, copy the channel settings, like if you want to paste them into a new image, um, snap to grid, which I don't really see a use for, or show all curves, which I have checked here. So let me uncheck that to show you the difference. If I were to make a change in, let's say, the red channel, right? So let's say I change the red channel like that, which I don't want to do, but just to show you. And then I go back here to the composite RGB channel. I can't see that red channel down here, right? But if I right click here and say show all curves, then I can see that I've made a change to the red channel. So I think that's helpful just to remind you sometimes that, oh yeah, you did make a change in one of those other channels. Because again, I rarely use them and I might not think to look there and realize that I'd made a change there. Now let me undo that. I don't want to change that red channel. I also think, you know, it's helpful to be able to reset a channel. You can certainly do that in older versions of Lightroom just by, say, changing the point curve down here from custom or whatever you have it to linear. All right. But maybe it's just a little bit quicker to right click and say reset channel. All right. I'll undo that. Another new feature with the point curve is that you can input a specific value, right? So if I click a point on the curve, I can change the, either the input or output values to any number I want. And I should point out here that Adobe has also changed these numbers. So previously, these were percentages. The input and output values in Lightroom were percentages. While in Photoshop, it was a scale from, and it still is, a scale from 0 to 255. So in this latest update to Lightroom, they've made these values a scale of 0 to 255, just like in Photoshop. Now, I don't really see a lot of instances where I would want to tweak these numbers, like where I would know what number I want to change it to in advance. It might be a helpful way to make small tweaks to a curve that way, right? So if I just wanted to tweak this slightly, I could change this output, say, to 197, and that nudges the curve ever so slightly. Or maybe if I wanted a point on the curve to be neutral, to be what I originally had it set for, I could just make these numbers the same, you know, make, make them both 71 in this case. Again, I don't see myself using that a lot. One new feature here, however, that I've been wanting from Adobe for a long time that they've finally given us is the ability to nudge a point on the curve using the arrow keys. So I don't have to actually select the point. If I just hover my mouse over a point on the curve and hit the up arrow, so I'm just holding down the up arrow key or the down arrow, I can nudge that curve, that point on the curve, to fine tune it. Now, unfortunately, 
using the left and right arrow keys doesn't work here. If I use the left arrow key, that just takes me to the previous image, or the right arrow key takes me to the next image. But just being able to nudge a point up or down should usually be enough to kind of fine tune a point really quickly and easily. And I'm sure that's a feature I will use a lot. Unfortunately, that's not helpful with the ends, the white point and the black point and the point curve, because I almost always want to keep those ends along the top and bottom. I don't want to shift them up or down. I want to shift them left or right. So I can't do that with the arrow keys. I have to just drag those points as I always have. One thing I can do though with that is something I've always been able to do with the point curve in Lightroom, which is to hold down the Option or Alt key to sort of slow it down. And that allows you to fine tune things. You can see here that my mouse is moving much faster than this point on the curve because I'm holding down that Option or Alt key and it, it's almost like the point on the curve is sort of stuck in molasses. So that allows you to kind of fine tune any point on a curve more easily. Okay, so that's a look at what I think are the two most useful new features in the latest Lightroom Classic update. I hope you found that helpful and thanks very much for watching.